Welcome back to This Is A Commander Channel, where this is a Commander Channel, and today I'm going to talk about Commander Tough Rules and Cool Interactions, Episode 97. Today's episode is going to take a further look at triggered abilities, as last week's episode covered when triggered abilities do and do not see the events that trigger them. Today I'm going to focus on two specific cards that see quite a lot of play in Commander, and they seem similar, but have just enough differences that make them play out differently when it comes to triggered abilities and when they are seen in order to trigger. I'm also going to go a little bit deeper into some of these differences between the two cards for other things than just triggered abilities, like replacement effects. So let's get into what these two cards are. Genesis Wave is a sorcery for X green 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 that says reveal the top X cards of your library. You may put any number of permanent cards with mana value X or less from among them onto the battlefield. Then put all cards revealed this way that weren't put onto the battlefield into your graveyard. And then the other card is Primal Surge, and it is a sorcery for 8 green green that says exile the top card of your library. If it's a permanent card, you may put it onto the battlefield. If you do, repeat this process. Both of these cards are used in decks to just use a ton of mana to create a crazy board state and flip into some big scary creatures. But they go about it in a different way, and this can lead to a drastically different result, even if all of the exact same cards are at the top of your library and in the exact same order. So let's get into how they're different and why this difference matters, and of course, some examples. So obviously, these are different in terms of Gen Wave being a set value of X, and the Surge is totally random, as you might just whiff on the very first card being a instant or sorcery. But that's not what this episode is focused on. So then, what is the big difference between them that makes such an impact on gameplay? Gen Wave will put all of the X permanents onto the battlefield all at one time, whereas the Surge will put them onto the battlefield one at a time. Yes, no player will receive priority during the resolution of Surge, and we'll get to that in just a bit, but still the fact is that the cards are entering one at a time and therefore have an order to how they've entered. But with the Gen Wave, they are all entering at the exact same time. So what does this mean for triggers? What cards will see what cards? So first off, let's start with something a little easier than a massive Gen Wave. Let's start with one of my favorite cards of all time, Defense of the Heart, which just saw a reprinting in the Eldraine Enchanting Tales. And it says, at the beginning of your upkeep, if an opponent controls three or more creatures, sacrifice Defense of the Heart. Search your library for up to two creature cards, put those cards onto the battlefield, then shuffle. So let's say you search for Soul of the Harvest and Lotus Cobra. The Cobra's ability isn't important for now, but the soul says whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. So they are both entering at the exact same time through the resolution of the defense's triggered ability. The soul isn't out before the Cobra, but its triggered ability will still see the Cobra enter the battlefield and you will get to draw a card. The reason for these triggers getting to see each other is because of Comprehensive Rules 603.10, which says, Normally, objects that exist immediately after an event are checked to see if the event matched any trigger conditions, and continuous effects that exist at that time are used to determine what the trigger conditions are and what the objects involved in the event look like. However, some triggered abilities are exceptions to this rule. The game looks back in time to determine if those abilities trigger. Using the existence of those abilities and the appearance of objects immediately prior to the event. There's a little bit afterwards, but who cares? So basically, what this means is that anytime something happens in the game, anything, the game will look back in time to immediately before that event happened and see what changed. And then it will look at the game as it is now and it looks for anything that cares about how the state of the game has changed. So Defense's ability resolves and puts those two creatures onto the battlefield. Once they're out, the game looks back and sees that before they were not out and now they are on the battlefield. 
And then also, now there's an ability that cares about one of them being there that wasn't there before, so it will trigger that one time. I really hope that made sense. Okay, so now that we got that simple scenario out of the way, let's start to get a little crazier. I'm going to provide a whole bunch of scenarios and throw some bonus questions mixed in that I will not answer in this video, but I want to see your answers in the video's comments as they will take elements from previous scenarios and I'm curious if you guys can put the pieces of the puzzles together. Uh, I will respond to these comments after a while, give some people time to uh, come up with their own answers, and then I will start replying with correct answers. Also, a little different than how I usually do these, but I have so many scenarios for this video, so I'm going to just read through all the cards that I will be discussing first, and then just use them by their name when getting to the actual scenarios. Feel free to pause the video if you need more time to read them now, but I will still show them on screen during each scenario so you can read them then as well. Regal Force is a creature that has, when Regal Force enters the battlefield, draw a card for each green creature you control. Soul of the Harvest, which again says, whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card. Beast Within, which is an instant, the effect doesn't really matter for this episode, just that it is an instant, a not permanent card. Elemental Bond, which is an enchantment that says, whenever a creature with power three or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Lotus Cobra, which is a creature that says, landfall, whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, add one mana of any color. Ashaya, Soul of the Wild, which is a creature that says, non-token creatures you control are forest lands in addition to their other types. Arwen, Weaver of Hope, is a creature that says, each other creature you control enters the battlefield with a number of additional plus one plus one counters on it equal to Arwen Weaver of Hope's toughness. Surak and Gorklaw is a creature that says, whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, put a plus one plus one counter on it. It gains haste until end of turn. Archelos, Lagoon Mystic, is a creature that says, as long as Archelos is untapped, other permanents enter the battlefield untapped. Zagoth Triome is a land that says it enters the battlefield tapped. Balaged Recovery is an MDFC, a modal double-faced card, that is a sorcery on the front side and then is a land named Balaged Sanctuary on the back side. Hushwing Griff is a creature that says creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. Clone is a creature that says you may have clone enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. And finally, Bear Umbra is an aura that enchants a creature. Its effect, not all too important, just that it is an enchant creature aura. Okay, so now on to scenario number one. You cast your gen wave, x equal to seven, and the top of your library is a forest. Lotus Cobra, Soul of the Harvest, a forest, Surak and Gorklaw, a forest, and then a beast within. You then put all of them into play for the gen wave, except the beast within, which just goes to your graveyard since it's an instant. How many cards will you draw from your soul? How much mana will you have from your cobra? And how many plus one plus one counters will be placed from your Surak and Gorklaw? Pause the video if you need some more time. This will apply to all of these scenarios. Uh, but I hope that this one was a little easy based on the Defense of the Heart scenario. You will draw two cards as the soul will see both of the other creatures enter. You'll make three mana from the Cobra as it'll see all the other three lanterns, uh, lands enter. And then Surak and Gorklaw will put a plus one plus one counter on each of the other two creatures as it will see them enter. Okay, scenario 1.5. Everything is the exact same as the previous, except this time you cast Primal Surge. After it finishes resolving, you'll have those six permanents on the battlefield, but now the Beast Within, which stopped the process and ended the surge, is just stuck in exile. What will be the card draw, the mana production, and the number of plus one plus one counters placed this time? So yes, things will come out differently. One land entered before the Cobra, so only one, two mana will be made this time. 
The cobra entered before the soul, so only one card is drawn. And the Surak and Goreclaw was the last creature to enter, so it will not place any counters onto any of the other creatures. Scenario number two. Let's copy the setup from the previous two scenarios, but this time replace the forest that was in the middle with a regal force. How would the gen wave and surge results change for the cards drawn? For gen wave, obviously the soul would draw an additional card because the regal is a creature, but the regal force would resolve and draw you four more cards. But what about for the surge? Would it be different in terms of cards drawn? In this case, the soul would now see two creatures entering the battlefield after it, so it would draw two rather than just the one from the previous scenario. But for the regal force, its card draw effect would still see the four cards drawn. While it is an ETB triggered ability, it only checks the number of creatures upon resolution. So even though the Sorok and Goreclaw were not you know, on the battlefield when the force entered, it was out when it resolved. In fact, the triggered ability on the force, as well as all of the triggered abilities that are being discussed, will not be on the stack until the gen wave and the surge are completely resolved, and a player would then gain priority. Okay, let's start stepping things up. Scenario number three. You cast your gen wave, x equals nine, and the top of your library is a forest, lotus cobra, Archelos Lagoon Mystic, Ashaya Soul of the Wild, Soul of the Harvest, a Forest, Sirach and Goreclaw, a Forest, and then a Beast Within. How much mana will your Cobra end up making? In this case, your Cobra would be making 8 mana. Obviously, none is made from the Beast Within, but the Ashaya has a static ability that turns all of these creatures, including herself, into a land in addition to their other types. And this static effect will apply instantly the second those creatures are put onto the battlefield. So even the Cobra will trigger its own landfall ability. Bonus question number one that I want to read your answers in the comments section. So same as the scenario number three, but of course this time you're casting Primal Surge instead of the Gen Wave. Again, the Beast Within will stop the process and end up in exile. So how much mana will your Cobra make this time? Will it change by casting Primal Surge rather than casting the Gen Wave? Scenario number four. Let's copy the library order from scenario number one, but change out Beast Within for a Balaged Recovery. Now, Balaged Recovery is a sorcery on its front side, but it's a land on its back side. So can you put it out onto the battlefield as the land side via the Gen Wave? The answer here is sadly no, you would not be able to do that. Gen Wave is revealing these cards from your library, so even though you're going to be holding a whole bunch of these cards in your hands while this is actually resolving, they're technically still in the library zone, and when in that zone, an MDFC only has the front face card that the game can see. So with a put into play effect, like on this, the game would only see the sorcery side of the Balagad recovery. You would need to be granted the permission to play a land in order to pick that side to be played. Bonus question number two. Once again, copying the previous scenario, but just changing from the Gen Wave to the Surge. Would anything change? Could you actually keep the Surge process going beyond the Balagad recovery because it's a land permanent on the one side? Would you be able to put it into play from Exile via the Surge Scenario number five. The top of your library is Elemental Bond, Surak the and Goreclaw, Lotus Cobra, A Forest, another forest, and then Beast Within. You cast your Gen Wave for six. How many cards will your Elemental Bond draw for you? Can you stack the Bond and the Surak and Goreclaw triggers so that you put the counter on to the Cobra, making it three power when the Bond trigger goes to resolve and checks its power? 
The answer here is sadly no. You will not be able to do that. The elemental bond is going to check for the power of the creature and the Sorak and Gore Claw. Again, that is a triggered ability because no player gains priority during this time. You will not be able to put that ability on the stack and resolve it. Scenario number six. Let's copy scenario five's library, but this time replace the Sorak and Gore Claw with an Arwen Weaver of Hope and you once again cast the Gen Wave. Will you draw a card from the bond for your Cobra entering with a plus one plus one counter on it, and now being a three power creature because of the Arwen buff? This one is a little interesting because the last time we had a static ability with Ashaya, she did allow for the Cobra to trigger more times, but sadly in this case, the bond does check the power of the creature as it is entering the creature, as it is entering the battlefield. And the way that Arwen's ability works is that it isn't a triggered ability, but is a static ability that modifies how the creatures would enter the battlefield. And since the Gen Wave puts all of these permanents out at the exact same time, she is not on the battlefield yet for her ability to see and modify how the Cobra enters the battlefield. If Gen Wave puts Arwen and any other creatures out at the same time, none of them will ever get any additional counters from her ability. Her, her effect needs to already be on the battlefield. Bonus question number three. Let's again copy the previous scenario, but this time you're casting the Surge. Will this now result in your bond drawing a card from your Cobra? Scenario number seven. You cast Gen Wave and reveal an Archelos Lagoon Mystic, as well as a Zagoth Trium. Will the land enter untapped as the Archelos will be untapped when it enters? Bonus question number four. Expanding on the previous scenario, you cast your Surge and exile an Archelos, and then afterwards you exile the Zagoth Trium. Will the land enter tapped or untapped? Leave your answer down in the comments. Okay, we're getting close to the end. Bonus question number five. Let's go back and copy scenario number one, but this time add in a Hushwing Griff that's in the library after the Cobra and you then Gen Wave for eight. Would this change any of the previous results of draw two cards, make three mana, and then a plus one plus one counter on each of the other non Sorok and Gore Claw creatures? How will this change things? If it will, who knows? Maybe it doesn't. Bonus question number six. Same as bonus question number five, but this time replace Gen Wave with the Surge. How many cards will you draw? Will the Hushwing Griff in a Surge resolve change things? Bonus question number seven. Instead of breaking this up into two questions, I think most of you are getting a hold of things. I've asked a ton of these questions. So let's just answer, how would a card like Clone be handled differently between Gen Wave and Surge? Let's copy the scenario from number one and replace the Soul with the Clone. Would it enter as either the Cobra or the Serac Angler Claw? Or is there only one that it could possibly enter as? or maybe it is neither of them for the Gen Wave. And then the same question for Surge. Could it enter as a copy of either of them, just one of them, or neither of them? And finally, bonus question number eight. Let's copy the last bonus question, number seven, and instead of clone though, let's use an aura that enchants a creature like Bear Umbra. Same questions as number seven, but now, can the Umbra enter enchanting either the Cobra or the Sorak and Gorklaw? Just one of those two, or neither of those two? Via the Gen Wave, and then what about if it's via the Surge? Holy crap. Okay, this may be the record so far with the most number of scenarios and bonus questions. I hope that I phrased everything clearly. I wish I had more time and access to better software to make the visual presentation of these scenarios easier to see and understand. Uh, maybe one day I can actually pay for that to become a thing. But for now, y'all are stuck with my crappy editing skills and software. Um, I even noticed in there somewhere, I think, yeah, scenario number seven, I asked the question, but not as a bonus question, and I forgot uh, to provide the actual answer to it, so let's just treat that one 
as a bonus bonus uh, scenario. Uh, I'm not sure if I would change the number. I don't know. Just uh, uh, just you know, see if you can provide the answers to scenario number seven. All right. Well, anyhow, that's all I've got for today's episode. As always, I hope that all of you have found this video to be entertaining at least, and I hope that a few of you have even learned something about the crazy rules in this great game of magic. Have a good one. Ta-ta. This is way too many scenarios. Holy crap. I'm looking at my video length right now, and it's almost 25 minutes. Granted, a lot of that is me making errors, and I'll be editing that stuff out, but still, usually these things are around, like, six or seven minutes, so, woof. Hope you guys figured all this out. I don't, I don't even know what I said. This is a lot of words in this episode. Woof. Choo.